day three of my epic trek across the Southwest to SVP. I just left Gallup, New Mexico, which is where I was staying last night, uh, mostly because it was a short hop from Petrified Forest. And, you know, I'm sorry these videos are kind of behind. You know, it's just, you know, the first night in Flagstaff, dinner took forever to uh, cook. But then again, I'm not used to cooking at that altitude, so like 7,000 feet. So, I mean, lesson learned, I should have built my fire better. But anyway, so, you know, after that, and then exhausted after the nine-hour drive, I just went to bed and then, you know, I did the first video last night, which took a while because, as you saw, you know, I did all sorts of stuff with it that took a while to edit, basically because I was just trying to be entertaining and funny, and whether or not I was is completely up to you. <laughs> the viewer is always right! And you know what, I think when I get home, I'm going to look into getting this weather stripping replaced. I mean, I've been putting up with it for three years, but... I mean, since I can't plug my stereo, or rather, I can't plug my phone into my stereo because it only has a CD slot and no audio jack, or even, hell, a tape slot that I can just stick an adapter into, you know, all I have to listen to is that wind, or, you know what, since I have no one to talk to because I'm all alone in this world, I have no one to talk to, so yeah, basically all I have to listen to is that damn weather stripping. Uh, but anyway, yeah, with the videos, the videos should, they should go smoother uh, because I just need to, you know, dump the video into Vegas and then render it. And, you know, I'm sure people probably complain that Oh, they're so long, I don't have time to watch that. Well, you can watch it in parts. Work your way through it. Chip away at it. You know, there's this nifty little feature on your YouTube account uh, called Watch Later. Just go down to the little, to the add function and say add to Watch Later. And then you can come back and watch it later. And also because, you know, I often do like to be short to the point, but when I'm exploring or when I'm discussing something, I can get into all kinds of detail. And, you know, I'm not just gonna trim that down for something as casual and, and easy to skip through as a YouTube video, you know? And, you know, because it's like when I did my, my third uh, Jurassic World blog post, you know, some, uh, some asshole asked, what's with this stream of consciousness? It goes on forever. Well, first, that shows he has no idea what stream of consciousness actually is. And two, I had a lot to say. There was a lot to discuss. And so it was long. So skim through it. Skip through it. You know, I mean, I organized it pretty well so you can just go and read the relevant section. Just like with this, you can kind of skip through to the relevant, or at least, you know, the things you want to see. And so ho I'm hoping to get caught up on these tonight, especially since, although, just the, the one setback is that it takes uh, my laptop forever to render a video. Even these, you know, little clips shot 3.1 megapixels. I mean, uh, you know, part two, the drive to Flagstaff. I you know I tried to do it this morning, but I had to stop because, you know, that 11 minutes of footage was going to take two and a half hours uh, to render. This is ridiculous. So, I mean, if these kind of travel logs are popular, if you guys do want to see more of that, then in addition to a better video camera and a more up to 
day version of Sony Vegas, I might also try investing in a new laptop. You know, the one I have is, let's see, I got it in, oh my god, it's like, yeah, I got it in like January of 2010. six years old. And as we all know, in the computer world, if something is older than a year, it's obsolete. I mean, my, my little tablet has more processing power than my laptop does. So like I said, I might invest in that more in that because, I mean, uploading the video to YouTube, I mean, I can understand that taking a long time, especially if the Wi-Fi is the strongest. Uh, you know, the first video there took about an hour with the Best Western Wi-Fi, but like I said, the Wi-Fi, you know, that could have, that could be a factor in how long it uploads. And, you know, you're transferring something from a hard drive into the, you know, metaverse of the internet. So, yeah, like I said, if, if this stuff's more popular, I'll try and uh, get better quality stuff. Because I love you guys so much. Because <laughs> uh, that's something else about traveling alone. Because, like, for example, I mean, if I had a travel companion, we could trade off driving, and then while they're driving, I can edit, render, so that all I have to do at the you know, hotel or campsite is upload it. monument you know I just said screw it you know if I don't get to the state park in time to camp I'll just find a motel because this is just way too good to pass up like for example here a uh, prehensile tailed co coyote with a lollipop <sighs> now according to the information these petroglyphs are estimated to have been carved between 400 and 700 years ago if you remember me talking last night, 1300 is when the 
uh, Anasazio or Ancestral Pueblo and world collapsed. And then they formed smaller communities into you know what we now know as the Pueblo nation today. But um, at 400 years old, you know, that's after Spanish contact, and so you sometimes see these crosses, whether they were put there by the pious Spanish or converted Indian, who knows? Although kind of given the sight, probably the latter. So here's the you know, sprawl of modern man. That is Albuquerque, about a mile above sea level. This explains why I'm having a little difficulty breathing at the moment. I mean, nah. I'd like to have one of these homes. Where is it? Or see, like that one. So here's some more petroglyphs. Is that shield with horns? Is that a beetle? Again. We'll never really know. This is something right there. Just lots of what are called anthropomorphic figures. That means man-shaped. Come up here. Now, the sign mentioned a shield. Now, I think this this is what it might be. Either that or it's a shield bearer. See his legs and his head's somehow gone. Just more of that war iconography I talked about. There's possibly a supernatural figure or maybe even a shaman. And then up here, just some more like a face stuff, maybe some kind of animal. Now this one is pretty interesting, because um, first right here we have, you now it looks like a war club. You can see kind of, here's the head, and there's actually the shaft poking through it. And, well, how do we know it's a war club? How do we know it's not a rattle? Well, one, why would a rattle have pointed ends? That's to, you know, maximize its damage on impact. But more importantly, because, you know, we have depictions of you know, guys who are very clearly warriors. Um, and they're, they're holding a club shaped like this. And also because there are clubs like this known from the Southwest. Um, almost looks a bit like a variant of the Plains Club. Mm, who knows, maybe it was. But also because you have this. Very interesting figure. Down here is a star. Um, now, how does a star relate to warfare? I don't know. I only just started the book. <laughs> but, you know, kind of based on skimming through that book, looking through the pictures, and a chapter in a book on Native American warfare is that the star does have a relation to warfare. Maybe it was as a kind of a holy war, or, you know, a warrior in service of the gods or something like that, like you see in some other cultures, especially Mesoamerica. Uh, like I said, I'll have to read the book. But, again, you know, more war iconography. Now, here's the park's logo. And it's what the trail is named after. Now, this is a macaw. How do we know it's a macaw? Well, I think because of the long tail feathers there. But it's not just a, you know, wild-ass guess. Um, the uh, skeletons of macaws have been unearthed in various pueblos throughout the southwest, especially at uh, the Grand Pubog, Chaco Canyon. And because these were important trade items, you know, he actually had people up here using their feathers and headdresses. You know, and it's, it's actually just kind of remarkable uh, how far things could have been traded back then because. You're talking about a people with no wheel, no horse, or other pack animals, aside from dogs. And, you know, just that such things, 
even live animals like these macaws could be transported such a distance. Yeah. Here's another one, believed to be a seed pod or maybe leaves. Or who knows, maybe they were just really big fans of Mario. And here's a rather poor attempt at drawing a map of Alaska. Hardy har, stay tuned for more of The Roast of Ancient Native American Art. Because I am an asshole. Now here's a really interesting one. I mean, it's like a cross between a star, a bird of prey, and Bart Simpson. Um, so again, I mean, this one's completely up to interpretation. Maybe the combination of star and the talons. Maybe that's supposed to be uh, some kind of uh, representation of knife wing. Uh, knife wing was a supernatural bird entity, and he was often associated with warfare. And then the bunny-eared man. His ears are lopsided. Yeah, I joke, I joke, but this is all just so cool. Now here's something that looks like a shield bearer. Or maybe not if that's his arm. But anyway, it looks a lot like shield bearers. Basically they got this big round object in front of them and you just see their feet coming out. Now, because over there, we saw what was probably a shaman. Same thing, except his arms were sticking out. Kind of the rationale is that, you know, the sh with the shield bearer, you don't see their arms, because they're holding the shield. And who knows, those, those could be eagle feathers or something. Loads of Native Americans uh, wore eagle feathers um, on their head when they went to war. Yep.